It all started when I was seven years old. Visits to my school friend's old Georgian house, dripping in ivy, laden with fireplaces and creaking floorboards, were most anticipated. The charm of the cosy kitchen met with the curiosity of a real-life attic. But the most enigmatic feature of this historic house in the heart of our village was what lie deep below. Down a winding staircase we would go, tingles down our arms and a hesitancy that was always overcome by excitement. My friend had her very own cellar, and in this cellar was a large and ghostly well, perhaps where a dragon once lived, I would ponder. It was in those moments that I fell in love with old houses and vowed only to live in, love and fill them with beautiful things and of course, memories. It's a very gloomy November day here and so I thought this would be the best time to spark a little bit of Christmas joy ahead of time and get to creating a little bit of a winter display for this old house. So one of the things I really love to do in winter and I've shared a few times before is forcing bulbs. Now I typically do that after Christmas and it's kind of what helps me to get through the deepest depths of midwinter and kind of that that period of time where it just feels like the winter is kind of droning on a little bit but one thing I've seen many people do um, particularly in kind of old kind of charming characterful homes is forcing paper white bulbs for a bit of a Christmas display. And I've never tried that before and I'm going to try it today. And I've got everything that I think I need to do it. I've got my paper white bulbs. I've bought some um, dried sheet moss, um, which I'll show you what I'm going to do with that. And then I've also got some regular kind of wet moss, <laughs> which is outside. And I've basically picked up every vessel I can find in my home that I would typically use to either do what I've just said, which is forcing bulbs in, or it's, you know, my vases, etc. And I've got a real array, which I've definitely said before. Sorry, I thought it was a spider. It's not. Um, I've got a real array. So like this, I use as a vase. It actually does look like a typical vase, but actually technically I think this had a candle in with some rope around there and the rope broke. So I think we just ended up repurposing. This was a Christmas candle from Marks and Spencer's last year. Um, these are two Delft bowls that I got from a charity shop. Um, I use them a lot to force bulbs in. I've got an old marmalade jar um, that I bought from a vintage shop in uh, Hadlow near Tunbridge called Weathered and Worn. Absolutely gorgeous. Follow them on Instagram, it's amazing. I've got some other X candles and I've got an actual genuine legitimate posy vase as well. And I might I have got a couple of other vases, like little posy vases I could possibly use. So it's very, very possible that I may play around and get a few more, but essentially the idea is to create a bit of a winter display and have just an abundance of paper white bulbs. Some of this um, could be used as kind of a bit of a table centerpiece for Christmas day or just for in your home generally. And what's brilliant about paper whites is now is probably one of the best times to plant them in time for a bit of a Christmas flower. As I understand it, they take five to six weeks to flower. And so around 
find that's now is a really good time to do it. You can also succession, succession, you can also succession, you can also succession, sh can't say it. You can also succession So, which is basically where, say, every week or two, you would add some more to the mix so that then actually when some go over, the next couple. and when they flower they flower for one to two weeks and yeah i am really excited to get going and have a bit of a play around my one last box of goodies is my sphagnum moss which is the type of moss that's already wet i use this quite a lot when i'm doing um christmas wreaths so i actually end up getting two boxes with the view that i will leave this stuff outside and then the beauty being I already have my moss then for my Christmas wreath as long as I don't end up using it all. There's a couple of different ways that you can do these that I've been reading about. So some of them you can just put into, um, sometimes you can just put it into water, which for a posy vase like this, where the bulb isn't going to fit in there, I'm going to try the water trick there. And actually I also read that you should add like vodka or something because paper whites get super super tall and so it actually stunts how tall they get so they're less likely to like fall over and, and what have you as well others you can put obviously them in soil and um, you can put them in i think some people put them in pebbles and um, so they get kind of like stones that they would fill some of these vases with and one of the ways you can also do it is just with moss um, and so that's what i'm doing because i really love a bulb display where you have the moss on top which is why i bought this dried sheet moss to go on the top but because i want them to grow i want to keep them moist still and so the sphagnum moss that's where that's going to come in handy because then that's what i can put them on i want to have a display of kind of varying heights which is why i've got so many different contraptions to house these in but i'm going to kick off with my glass vase because i really want kind of one big one Sometimes with the sphagnum moss, because it's fresh and live, you can get bugs in it. So just be, be prepared, be warned. I don't really know how many to put in, so I'm just kind of playing it by ear. dog jars from bonfire night to an old decorative Christmas candle, I continue to designate bulbs and layer upon layer build my display. And for the final touch, some twinkly lights and a dotting of candles to sparkle on gloomy misty mornings and dark winter nights. 